What if I told you Mount Rushmore wasn't just a sculpture carved by skilled artists, but a feat of engineering pulled off by a team of rugged miners with no art experience? From dynamite to ancient Greek techniques, let's dive into how this iconic monument was created against all odds. Mount Rushmore is one of America's most recognizable landmarks, but its creation was far from ordinary. Instead of delicate sculpting, this monument came to life with dynamite, jackhammers, and a crew of miners led by an ambitious sculptor. Today, we're unraveling the secrets behind this masterpiece, exploring how it was meticulously mapped onto the mountain and completed without losing a single man. Our story begins in the 1920s. South Dakota, still a new state, struggled to attract tourism and attention. State historian Doan Robinson had a bold idea create a colossal sculpture of Wild West heroes. He contacted Gutson Borglum, a sculptor known for his work in Georgia. Borglum, however, envisioned something even grander, an homage to America's presidents. In 1925, he traveled to the Black Hills and found his perfect canvas, the towering Mount Rushmore, a granite cliff 500 feet tall. With the location selected, Borglum faced another challenge. Mount Rushmore was inaccessible, lacking roads, electricity, or even a means for workers to scale it. By 1927, a road was built to transport supplies, and a makeshift village sprang up, complete with workshops and housing for the miners. To reach the mountain's peak, a massive staircase and cable car were constructed, allowing workers to haul tools and materials up the cliffside. The first target? George Washington's face. Large chunks of rock were blasted away using carefully placed dynamite, leaving a rough shape for the miners to refine. They used jackhammers powered by a unique compressed air system with pipes stretching over 2,000 feet up the mountain. This setup allowed up to 16 jackhammers to run simultaneously. The miners, most with no artistic experience, were trained to guide the heavy tools precisely, often using chains and even their own feet for balance. But how did they know where to carve? Borglum couldn't simply project his design onto the mountain as he'd done with past projects. Instead, he turned to an ancient technique known as the pointing machine, which allowed him to scale up his model with pinpoint accuracy. By positioning a weighted arm on specific points of a small model, Borglum's team could measure the precise location and depth to recreate it on the mountain. With a custom-built, larger version of the device, they marked thousands of points on Mount Rushmore, guiding the miners every step of the way. As George Washington's head took shape, Borglum focused on perfecting the details. He experimented with depth and shading, even carving pupils into the eyes to create a lifelike sparkle. For each president's face, a unique technique called bumping smoothed and brightened the granite, giving the stone a fresh, vibrant look. Despite the risks, including rock falls from precarious angles, the miners worked for 14 years, enduring hazardous conditions with remarkable dedication. Gutzon Borglum envisioned Mount Rushmore as far more than a mere tribute to four American presidents. He had grand aspirations that extended beyond the iconic faces we see today. His plans called for carving the figures from head to waist, creating full-bodied representations that would amplify the monument's visual impact and convey a sense of monumental scale. Borglum also dreamed of constructing a secret chamber, a grand hall of records concealed behind the faces. This chamber would house historical documents, artifacts, and a written history of America, serving as a time capsule for future generations to discover. Borglum saw this hidden vault as a way to preserve the legacy of the United States, ensuring that visitors from centuries later would understand the significance of the monument and the figures carved into it. However, in the late 1930s, as work on Mount Rushmore continued, the world's attention began shifting to a new and ominous reality, the onset of World War II. As the war demanded vast resources and redirected national priorities, funding for the monument dwindled. With the country focused on the war effort, federal funds previously allocated for the project were reallocated, making it increasingly difficult for Borglum and his team to move forward with his ambitious vision. The situation took a more personal turn when Borglum, who was already in his 70s, began experiencing health problems. In 1941, he passed away unexpectedly leaving the project without its visionary leader. With limited resources and no guiding hand to complete Borglum's grand vision, work on the mountain ceased. Although the monument remained unfinished, Mount Rushmore achieved its primary goal. 
Borglum's monumental artwork successfully put South Dakota on the map, drawing tourists from across the country and around the world. The striking image of four towering presidents became a symbol of American resilience, embodying the values of freedom, democracy, and unity. Over the decades, Mount Rushmore has become an enduring icon, celebrated in American culture, history, and tourism. While Borglum's full vision may never have been realized, his creation has surpassed expectations, becoming a testament to American artistry and perseverance. It reminds us that even incomplete works can leave a powerful legacy, touching generations and preserving a vision that transcends its maker's lifetime. Mount Rushmore remains a testament to determination, vision, and innovation. What started as a bold idea became a monumental achievement, completed by unlikely sculptors who transformed a mountain into a masterpiece. Thanks for joining us on this journey through history. If you enjoyed this look into Mount Rushmore's creation, leave a comment below and let us know what you think. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more incredible stories of engineering, history, and mystery.